what many call the absolute best beginner motorcycle is what we're looking at today. This is a 2021 Rebel 500. And although the Rebel 300 is probably the best new, new, new beginner uh, motorcycle out there, the 500 at least bridges the gap. So if you have some experience or if you just really think you're gonna grow out of the 300 super quickly, the 500 is there to bridge the gap between the 300 and then the bigger 1100. So today I'm gonna to tell you all the features that this bike carries. We're gonna get on the road. I wanna see how it does on the interstate too, being so lightweight, how confidence inspiring is this bike truly to new beginners? And is it really the best beginner motorcycle on the road? Let's get into it. All right, let's talk about the basics and then we'll get on this thing and take it for a spin. So you have a 471 cc liquid cooled motorcycle. That's 414 pounds with all the fluids in it. So lightweight and a relatively tame motor. I wanna say it's somewhere in the neighborhood of 41 or 42 horsepower. Keep in mind an Iron 883 is 52 horsepower where an Indian Scout 60 is like 78 horsepower. So it definitely is something that is going to be more attractive to the new rider. Now, 42 horsepower in a motorcycle really isn't a whole lot. Keep in mind the Rebel 300 is a 271 cc single cylinder motor. So that one's liquid cooled as well, but you're gonna get even less horsepower. So I, I say all that because again, this bike at 42 horsepower, I imagine it's pretty dang forgiving and in a, in a great entry level bike as far as the power and weight. If you go any lower than this, I don't know that I would even wanna take it on the interstate. Even this might be a little too much for the interstate. We're gonna find that out later. But just keep in mind, super lightweight with a relatively tame motor, but it does have a low seat height as well, 27 inches, three gallon tank, available ABS. This one does have ABS, by the way. LED headlight, front and rear turn signals. They look like halogens to me. I don't think they're LED. It does have a six speed transmission, mid controls, and a single two piston caliber front and rear. Now the bike is put together in a really weird but kind of cool way. Let me show you some other things about this bike that make it unique. So the bike looks like a couple of different things to me. It's almost like they randomly put things together on this bike. And then when they saw the finished product, they're like, man, this actually looks really good. And that's the impression that I get with this exoskeleton, right? That kind of is like the FTR or V-Rod. The tank, which is like a mini chopper, the chopped fenders front and rear, and almost these low profile, not really drag bars, but close to it, kind of iron 883 feel with a modern LCD screen. But it ain't really that modern when you look at it either. I mean, even the startup screen on this looks like it's from possibly the 80s. So there, there's a lot of different things going on here. The previous owner, added this little windshield. Okay, so that kind of completes the look. And there is an SE version of this that comes with a little mini, um, like a headlight cow almost, not really a fairing or anything like that. The perfectly round uh, <laughs> mirrors up on top. What, what I like is that some bikes in this beginner sphere, if you will, look kind of goofy. And although this one, is on the edge of the kind of goofy look. To me, with the blacked out everything, and especially this denim white paint, whatever you know uh, Honda actually calls it, it really doesn't look bad at all. Actually, it looks pretty good. What I would imagine though, is with this kind of crunch design and the mid controls, if you are a taller rider, you're probably gonna hate this. So that's one thing you have to keep in mind. Mid controls are nice when when you know, you're on the motorcycle and you're kind of, uh, you know, you really want to tuck your knees in and all that kind of stuff. But when you want to stretch out, that is not a good look. And if you're a tall rider, dude, I would imagine you have some trouble on this motorcycle. We have the solo seat right here. It's very, very plain looking. Now keep in mind these bikes, brand new, are in the mid sixes, maybe upper sixes, depending on the version that you're going to get. So it is super affordable. I wanna say the Rebel 500s are in the upper 
uh, fours to the low fives, somewhere in there. So uh, let's go ahead and saddle up, see what this bike can actually do on the road and then on the interstate. All right. Look at that. A rebel. All right. So, high beam, low beam, horn. Let's check it out. Just as you would imagine, a little squeaky. We got buttons on either side of the cluster. So we got trip A, trip B, uh, miles per gallon average, one and two. Uh, I guess that would be current and total miles. Over here, this is probably how we reset it. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so not much to it. We do have a digital uh, speedometer. I'm surprised there's no, like no tack at all we do have our gear indicator that does not go away when you pull in the clutch but the bike shut off ah i know why can y'all see what do y'all know why take a guess why you think the bike just shut off okay so let's put it back in the neutral and now i'll start it and put the kickstand up not a bad feature honestly I kind of I kind of like that feature I know I've definitely forgotten about it uh, from time to time too so I imagine the ABS light will go away whenever we get uh get to get in here so super light my goodness slipper clutch so it's designed to I, I want to say it's like 30% less force uh, to engage the, the clutch is what I read. All right, here we go. cruising 47 miles per hour fourth gear and it does feel extremely tame I guess is the best word tame is what we'll use it sounds okay I'll give it that it doesn't sound bad you know what I mean it's a it's a parallel twin that's a 500 okay so I'm always gonna tell you how things are from my perspective my opinion right but I also want to look at things from a fair objective view based on who this bike is for and one thing about it I, I do not trust people especially when I don't have my bike um, and I don't have all those lights on my bike on the front I just, I, I, on the Iron 883, I was almost conditioned to slow down anywhere like that, you know, so uh, just, uh, <laughs> that's just me, you know what I mean? Um, but I always try to look at it from the perspective of who the bike is for, right? So um, I, I don't necessarily want to be super unfair. I do want to throw my opinion in here, obviously, but I also want to look at it, you know, based on who the bike is really intended for, because it's not intended for somebody like me with with any any real kind of experience you know what I mean so that slipper clutch is really nice super nimble designed to be easy to ride that clutch basically feels like nothing so if you're using this bike as a commuter you're gonna be pretty stoked that even in stop-and-go traffic you don't have to work your hand over time just to be able to uh, you know kind of keep up with stop-and-go traffic so that's pretty cool 
taken off in fourth gear. You know, again, it's just, uh, you, you can tell the limitations of the motorcycle as far as the power. So I, I'll be honest with you, man, I couldn't imagine buying a Rebel 300 even as a new, new rider and being satisfied for more than 15 minutes. No, I, I probably like a couple of weeks maybe of consistent riding and I would be probably ready to upgrade. So that's why I do try to put a, a different spin on it. Although I think there, there should be some real consideration of, of who you are as a new rider, are you somebody that can kind of ride your own ride? Are you willing to take it easy for a while until you learn the basics? That's why I think it's so hard to really gauge who a, who a uh, you know, every beginner's first motorcycle. Uh, you know, there's some people that have started on street glides with the freaking 114s and the 107s and been totally fine with that other people would probably get themselves killed on it i mean granted there's people that have started on you know booses and you know everything else uh that have probably been just fine others it would get them into trouble so really just depends on who you are but i, I could not imagine the 300 you know what i mean like that it just it seems like it would be you grow out of it so quickly just my opinion but I, I i don't know that i would go that route to be quite honest with you so as promised we are going to take it on the interstate i want to see how it does out there man I, I mean really i do because uh if you're going to be doing any kind of commuting you're going to want to know man is this you know and that's one problem that i have with the iron 883 i'm kind of Kind of going all over the place but i want to use this as an example the iron 883 on the interstate sketched me out it was not comfortable and that's one of the main reasons i uh <sighs> once i was used to that bike i just you know i got rid of it um so simple instrumentation small gas tank three gallon tank uh looks aesthetically we already talked about that it looks good lightweight look my feet easily touching the ground 27 inch seat height the clutch is easy to engage man so once we get back we're going to cover some more things after this little interstate uh ride and uh i don't know give you give you my overall impressions of the rebel 500 and i guess answer the question in my opinion if this is the best motorcycle for beginners out there feels like a metric motorcycle as far as the shifting too super smooth sometimes you kind of second guess or i am i'm second guessing myself sometimes as i hit those gears that i actually hit it you know um so very smooth the the you know i was coming down the frontage road here and i felt a little bit of vibration 45 miles an hour i kicked it up to fifth and you know a lot of that vibration went away i imagine that's probably going to be the case on the interstate as well again it just ain't for me some people can deal with that and they're just fine i just i did not like that on the iron so that's what i'm really gauging how this bike does is compared to that iron very smooth extremely smooth one thing you're not going to get like you will on the iron though is that kind of vibration at idle it's like I said ultra smooth if you will uh the seating position is not bad um I, i'm not a fan of leveling lean over at all uh <laughs> which i may want to whenever i'm on the interstate on this thing kind of duck behind my little windshield but i'm not I'm just not a fan of it um it, it's just uncomfortable for me and that's kind of why i lean more towards like the scout rogue uh, because of those handlebars that kind of come back to you uh, a, a little bit more. I like that more, you know, mini ape or even, you know, 
12, 13 inch bar type of feel. It's just very, very comfortable, very natural uh, for me personally. One thing to keep in mind too, if you've never been on a motorcycle, the mid controls um, are nice at first because it feels very natural. But once you get on the road for a little bit of time and you start maybe exploring other models, you're gonna find, at least this was the case for me, forward controls are so much more comfortable. They really are, dude. And, and this whole sport bike thing, man, is, you know, I can't do this on a sport bike. You know, and I'm not comparing this to a sport bike, it's just kind of got a sporty feel to it, sporty cruiser, if you will. Uh, very similar, again, to the Indian Scout uh, bobber in a way or the 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 scout 60 bobber uh, it's just got a very uh, sporty feel I don't know but I can't flat foot a damn crotch rocket I'll tell you that Six gears, 68 miles an hour. My GoPro is not going to want to stay up. getting pushed around nearly as much as I thought I would. Um, it's actually not too bad. We go up to 75. And again, Nothing like the Iron 883 at this kind of speed. It holds a good line. I'm not afraid to take my hands off the bars. Now, if I got a good crosswind, I'm sure it kind of freaked me out a little bit. I'm, I'm positive of that, but all in all, it's not too bad. My biggest concern when I'm on the interstate and I'm on one of these bikes, at least this one has kind of a little wind windshield. But when I'm on one of these bikes on the interstate and I get behind one of those trucks, man, I, I always see it coming, dude. Like, there's gonna be a freaking rock or a piece of rubber that's gonna slam right into my chest, dude. That happened to me all the time on the iron. All the time. I mean, 70 really isn't terrible. I think, I think this would be even more comfortable if I had a set of bars and I was in a position, a, a seating position that I really enjoy, you know what I mean? It, it does feel in a way that this thing is kind of maxed out. By the way, big thanks to American Biker here in Latson for letting me come out here and test out this motorcycle and all the ones they've let me test really awesome group of guys come talk to Rob let them know that I sent you if you're looking for a new Indian used Harley or maybe a Honda Rebel 500 never know what you'll find up there at American Biker yeah I mean 75 80 miles an hour I would feel pretty much like okay we're tapped out you know I don't know that I'd want to go too much faster on a bike like this you know what I mean um, I don't even know what it maxes out at, but you know, it's just, uh, you know, whatever. Let me kind of process my thoughts on the Rebel 500. Let's get back to the shop and I'll tell you overall pros and cons, how I see it on this motorcycle. And, uh, if I think this is the best beginner bike out there. All right. So we just finished up the test ride on the Rebel 500. Let me tell you about some of the pros on this motorcycle. First, the cost. So 
this one here with ABS, you're looking at seven grand. This thing does not have any miles. I mean, we checked it. What was it? 1800? Yeah, 1800 miles. So no miles basically on this thing at all. It's a Honda. They are bulletproof. They make bulletproof motors. Uh, fantastic. The styling on the bike is another bonus, man. It doesn't look like a beginner motorcycle. It, it, it looks like a stylish sporty type of cruiser you know i'm even i even kind of like this windshield i'm not typically a fan of like flat but it's got enough of a curve to it it, it looks okay i kind of wish this gap right in here was closed up a little bit over the headlight but eh, it's okay but the styling overall the factory items it looks really good so you can get into them relatively cheap the barrier to entry is not crazy liquid cool so if you are commuting you you don't have a ton of heat to worry about the slipper clutch is fantastic i want to say actually this is the first slipper clutch that i've used and this is this is great man if you have any kind of hand tension uh or or tension in in your in your wrist or your hand carpal tunnel whatever man this is great dude and and i do have some of that i actually had carpal tunnel surgery and so both of my hands are weaker than what they what they used to be so having just that really easy engagement is great you got like the kickstand feature so if you try to take off in first gear with kickstand down that bike's gonna shut it off right you have abs which is another great feature i don't care if you've been riding for freaking 30 years abs is a fantastic feature on motorcycles and honestly the way the bike handles at speeds of 70 75 miles an hour it didn't do too bad you know for what it is and as lightweight as it is not bad at all now let's talk about some of the cons here first one the mid controls if you're a taller rider i can't see you enjoying this too much at all you got kind of a crunched feel in there uh forward controls are just so nice they're so comfortable you can stretch your legs out i'm a fan of forward controls not too much on mid controls although i understand why they're on the bike I still prefer for forward controls. This seat sucks. Your, your, your butt is not going to thank you after being on this thing at all. It's firm. It's small. You know, it's it's kind of wide in here, but it's just it's not great at all. You know, another con is, you know, there is no storage. I'm sure they make some kind of bags or something that you can put on here. You know, that would be something I would have to do because that's just, that's just, you know, I, I have to have storage. And the acceleration works two ways. It's very forgiving for a new rider. Very forgiving. But once you start to get into it a little bit, it feels like a turtle. 40 horsepower. I don't even know what they claim these things have. I saw some reports of dinos on 40 horsepower, 42, I don't know, something like that. You can tell who it's aimed at now i could not imagine once again i could not imagine riding a rebel 300 with less horsepower than what this has uh, no i i think i'd be good on that low end torque is pretty decent acceleration is okay but again beginner riders you want something forgiving super easy to turn easy to move around not heavy if you drop it you can pick it right back up uh, with with not a whole lot of effort there at 400 pounds it's got a lot of great things going for it and i would say overall out of all the bikes that that i've tested for a new new brand new rider this has to be the best one because of how forgiving it is and how smooth it is on the highway so you're not restricted to kind of just in town stuff you can do some you know some 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 highway riding on it would i want to do you know 30 40 miles a day on the highway on this thing no nope not at all <laughs> but at the same time you can do it and it is relatively smooth so overall man i'd give the bike for what it is like a nine and a half out of ten this is really seriously one of the best beginner motorcycles if not the best one that i've ever tested probably even better than the scout 60 i hate to say that uh because those bikes i i think are amongst one of the best but this thing is just so forgiving so there you go man looks good 
doesn't sound great, but it serves the purpose for which it is intended very well. I'd love to hear what your opinion is down in the comments below. If you like this type of content, make sure you drop me a like on the channel. I'm always doing some kind of bike review or bike related content so consider subscribing and if you want to support what i do you can do that on patreon for as little as one dollar a month big thanks to you guys see you in the next one and as always hold them down